Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo run of this week's Harbinger mission. Now it's week two, so it's slightly different. The jumping puzzle's different, the locations of the emissaries are different. So I'm going to do a quick kind of flawless run, as a flawless run, I'm going to do a quick run on it just to show you guys where the emissaries are, how it, the different boss battle, different jumping puzzle, and the the paracausal feathers are in different locations so if you're still needing those i'm going to show you where they are now i'm doing it on the the warlock i'm using a a war main cell build you don't have to in fact just to address some of the questions that i was asked in my previous video you don't even have to use the same weapons i'm this is a guide and showing you how to attack each section you can then figure out what weapons you want to use if you don't want to use the weapons that i'm using so, the start of this mission is exactly the same as it was last week. Yeah, make it, if, you've, if you've done it last week, you'll have a mission marker on your map. And you can just start it off from there. If not, you go to the usual place in EDZ. Uh, if the wall was closed, shoot it out with the Hawkman and you're ready to go. Now, the modifiers for this are the same as last week. The snipers will put their barriers up more often. Solar, solar incoming solar and environmental damage is increased. Still chaff, still a, a couple of unstoppables. So again, exactly the same. Now the the the, the strategy I'm using on this on the warlock, you can do it on each character. They'll all bring something different to the table. If people want to see a hunter run, if people want to see a titan run, I will put them up. But if people want to see a low level run, I've, I've been, I don't really want to like take the, you know, do too many of these runs. But if people still want to see a low level run, I will do a low level run. So when you get into the room, the kind of as I, as I said, the harbinger locations are different. So the captains are in a completely different place. And then you can get the centurion and the wizards from the old the old captain location. So but the locations in this room are the same. So we're just going to get this. We're going to get the wizard low. Now you see she ran away, but it's no problem. She's going to come back and then she's going to get finished. Uh, just just be careful because I've said this before in these videos. And I think a few people have agreed. The, the, the taking here are a little bit annoying. The taking are a little bit annoying everywhere. The mod system I'm using, I've got uh, basically geared towards my heavy. So I've got Ammo Finder, Scavenger, Reload. Uh, I don't have reserves on because I wanted uh, I wanted more protection for my for my uh, character. So on the chest plate, I've got Arc Resistance and Sniper Resist. So we're just again just once I t once I take out the first ad, then I'm looking uh, to take out the rest of the snipers, and then we're going to be moving down to the Centurion change back I, I jump between the Pedition and the Yan 7 uh, just means that I can match the shields a lot easier so take this Centurion shield out I'm just gonna throw my grenade down there come back put down a rift the grenade should stop any ads that, that think that they can get away with shielding him they should just get rid of those now another kind of thing is most of the time when you take out a uh, uh, harbinger uh, emissary you can see that you're gonna get a sniper and the sniper will appear in the location that you need to go and attack that uh, emissary from so because two, the two emissaries you can get them from the exact same location that's why I got another sniper up there uh, what th when we take out this uh, when we go down and we get this champion this uh, solar shielded captain to go we won't get a sniper for him. His location will be where we used to exit the room, roughly. Not right here where I am now. It's further, further, just a bit back from where we are. That will be where the first emissary is. So you can see he's got that shield. I'm just, I'm just, because this, I, I think I've only done this. What I don't at this point, I've maybe only done it once. So I was like, where am I going? <laughs> I couldn't remember, but uh, I picked it up pretty quickly. I think. I did actually have a moment in the jumping puzzle. I'm just changing uh, to my last position should I need it. So I'm going to show you where the 
where the locations for the the feathers are. This is the captain. You've got two captains in here now. So a couple of ads. So I'm just going to put my grenade down there, merely to try and get as much of my grenade back as I can. And then you can see the one explosion from the one captain took the other captain's shield down. So the locations of the, the paracausal feathers are in the same rooms as you, basically where you fight the where you fight the the emissaries and the first feather is right here obviously it's not here for me although I done a run with a friend I took a friend through this and I didn't actually pick the feathers up but because he did it picked them up for me as well I didn't realize that so this is where the first feather is so it's just off the room where the, the solar captain is now what we're going to do is we're going to make our way back out the same way we came in and then we're going to head up to where that last sniper was that we took out. I'm just checking all the areas because, as so I say, I hadn't really checked where everything was. So you're kind of getting to see my thought process to go along with this. So when you come out, go left and it's 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 up high. Uh, you'll remember it was where we, I think it was where we took the wizards out last week. That's, that is the area we're going to. So it's the higher out of the two platforms and you can access the... Centurion and the wizard from that location. So we're just gonna jump up here and it's it's still further further back, I think. Or is it is it up here? Maybe it's here, yeah. So it's the lower one. I thought it was the higher one. Uh so in here you'll have the centurion and you'll have the wizard just from you'll get them from different places. So as you can see, heavy ammo find us is perfect in here. So this is the Centurion, so we're going to have a Void Wizard, two Void Acolytes, and an Arc, the Arc Centurion. So as you can see, I'm just going to take the Centurion's shield down and just finish them off. And then I'm going to come out, nip back a little bit, switch, and take out the Void Shields. Now right behind us is like a junction box. You'll see it on the wall there. You'll see me look at it in a, in a second. The feather is on the junction box. This one here where it says six, th that one there. That is where the feather is here. And if you jump up here, this takes us right to the wizard. And you want to, you want to do this kind of route because this is also the exit. So the, the, the feather will be on the middle platform. This platform that we're shooting on, it will be on one of the box on the left. You'll, the, there's no way you can miss that. So you'll get that one no problem and there's your wizard and the exit is right where the wizard is there we go that's that's all of them them complete now that's where that's exactly where i've just shot but you'll see that there's no way you can't see it and that breaks that and this is right where the exit is so again as i said last week the, the the way you take the ads out is the way you'll get them in the centre room. So we get the captains first, then we get the centurion, then we get the wizards. We're going to attack them the exact same way. Now, the boss... Every, there's a lot different about this this week. The boss is different. I'm, I'm taking out some ads just to see if I can drop any more heavy. The boss is different in this one. But this centre room isn't. It doesn't feel any different. So again, we're just going to drop down get the ads to come in and then we're going to be attacking them from up here so don't fall off like that i found that i maybe it was just me today but i found that my warlock really struggled with the jumping today so there's your captain break his shield now i was lucky not lucky i expected to get it uh but the war mine cells really helped with just clearing ads in this room so, but yeah, as, as I was saying, you can, it's up to you what you run. You don't have to run the Xenophage. I had somebody say in one of the comments that I was, uh, that I was kind of not helping the solo players by using the, the Xenophage. I don't subscribe to that at all, because if you don't have the Xenophage, there's no, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's not on you if you don't have it. But my point is, if you don't have the Xenophage, then you're you're someone that plays on your own. You're not a solo player. That's maybe maybe that's being a bit harsh. I think a solo player is someone that likes to do stuff on their own, whereas someone that plays on their own is because they you know they play on their own. 
I think if you don't have the Xenophage, I think the reason why I'm mentioning this now is the Xenophage is really good for doing this act, these activities, but I've already been through the thing where people didn't want me using the Anarchy because, it, again, I was pushing solo players away. Uh, so I've changed. I no longer use the Anarchy for, for just about anything on the channel. And now the Xenophage is getting it. So it's like, as I said to, in the comment, in the reply, it's an easy critique to say, okay, do it without that weapon, do it without a hand cannon, do it without a pulse rifle. But then I, I'm going to take a load of stick if I say, dude, just go and get the gun. <laughs> you know, which is really what, what I should be saying. So there's, the Xenophage is good. Uh, the Lament's good in this as well. A sword is good. A sword would be really good in this. Uh, especially for the boss. The boss, I feel, is a lot easier than last week's. Uh, so, yeah. My rant is over about that. kind of just took... Took me by surprise that the that the old Xenophage was getting a bit of hatred because people don't have it. Uh, anyway, so again, as you can see, I've got Spoils of War on, so finishing champions will give me heavy, which is good because I'm going to need it. Uh, I, had a, I had a moment on the jumping puzzle as well because I, I literally couldn't remember which way to go. So it actually worked out okay because I ended up getting heavy ammo because of, I didn't know where I was going. <laughs> So, two wizards, grenade finish the one wizard off, and with the two wizards, obviously, uh, you're going to get the two unstoppables, but no, I'm saying with the two wizards, I got them with the two wizards, because I always kind of end up leaving the wizards till last, so I don't know if it's like, you don't get an unstoppable on the first wave, you get one on the second wave, and two on the third, or whether it's they're linked to certain champions, so, but you definitely do get uh, another a kind of bunch of bunch of little lads, but I couldn't find them. I wanted to put my grenade on them, but you can see them just to the left there. Now you can you can see a bunch of them behind those pillars. So what I'm trying to do here is, as I say, I'm not rushing it. There's no need to rush it. It makes me laugh when you when you do see people saying I didn't rush it. And then when you look at them, they're going in viz and running with swords, and yet yeah, you're rushing. You're, you're obviously saying you're not rushing before, before YouTube. <laughs> but you are rushing. Anybody that's doing anything with a high-impact, close-range weapon is, is trying to speed things up. So anyway, I'm, I'm, I am really not rushing this. There's the other unstoppable, so I'm just going to put a grenade there, because hopefully the rest of the little kind of trickly ads are going to push towards them. I'm just checking. Nearly got them all. Now, unfortunately, I can't see this other unstoppable. But I did get warming, which actually must have killed the other unstoppable. Which was unfortunate, but I didn't expect it to be able to kill him because of how much health he had and the fact you've got your you've got to stop him to actually finish him most times. So fin we'll finish this one anyway, and that's. That's that. That is this section done. Now, again, if if you've depend on how many times you've done this mission last week, and if you got the feathers and all that, you can finish it this week if you've got three characters. I have at this point finished the quest. I've got the ship. Uh, so I've already showed showed you guys where three paracausal feathers are. I'm going to show you where the other two are. One is in the boss room. So you can actually defeat the boss, then get it. You don't have to get it beforehand. I would suggest get the feather before you open up the chest at the boss. So we've moved. We've moved forward. We're going to come out out of this uh, portal, and the first feather is kind of right here. So you're going to jump up as if you're going to take the old jumping puzzle, right? The old way. Now I was a little bit kind of confused. Uh, about where to go here because I'd completely forgot but I'm just coming back up here to show you guys where the paracausal feather is it's right here it's right there so I'm actually going to end up coming back here to show the route from here uh, all the way to the boss because as you can see I'm a little bit like what? but you actually just go down you just keep going down you don't go up 
We went up the last time, it's down this time. So you come out here and then you're actually, if, if I would have been clever enough to pull my ghost up, my ghost would have shown me exactly where to go. But the reason why I end up coming all the way back and you'll see exactly why is because uh, I kind of, I kind of uh, fall off. <laughs> I think that's what happens here. Uh, yep, I fell off. You can see I can't, I, I can't, I can't thing it, but I managed to save it. So I end up going all the way back, <laughs> just to show you guys, don't go that way, because you're not going up on the pipe. Right, so I'm going to go back, all the way down here, and we get it pretty quickly. Uh, as you can see, people that make guides and people that do all this stuff, we've got to work it out as well. And I'm not really a big fan, I never have been, of, if I'm making a guide, I want my own understanding of it. So I won't watch someone else's run and then just carbon copy it. And I'm not, no shade, no, I'm not being nasty or trying to say anything about anybody, but I know that there's people that do it. I actually know people do that. And that's not because I know, it's because I know these people. So... I don't really like to do that. So, as you can see, if you pull out your ghost, it'll show you exactly where to go, which I should have done the last time. And then, you just follow this route. You don't go on the pipes this time, which is, the whole jumping puzzle is slightly different. Uh, you just go through here, and then... Be careful at this point. We're, we're almost at the boss. This is where one of the paracausal feathers was last week. This part can uh, can trip you up a little bit. So I'm going to put a grenade, which does get a hit, but doesn't really... I think it finishes one of the Cabal guys. There's two Cabal uh, phalanx here, two, two taken phalanx. So I'm going to push over because now I've got this war main cell and... This is the problem of the war mine cells. I suppose it's not really a problem when you think about it. I'm just going to use Xeno. Because if you don't... If you if you let them get on top of you like that, it's, it can be bad. This was where one of the paracausal feather was, feathers were last week. So we're going to have to take the route that you take back. If you do get this paracausal feather, we're going to have to take this route back to the boss. Which is right over here. So once you kind of clear these, these couple of ads... You're going to jump over, and you're going to have some taken throw, like shadow throw, and then a void wizard. Uh, and, then, and then we're back on the route that everybody will know from last week. So when, when I get to this point, you know, because I'm on the warlock, I can just throw that grenade. If I was on the warlock, there's, there's, about, there's about five or six shadow throw. They're not, you're not going to get overrun here. I'm just... You've got, you're going to have two of these elite snipers up top. One, I'll just wait for this wall to do its thing and then I can slip past, get the second one and then go. There's the second one. Now, most of you guys will know now where we are. So, <laughs> I jump. I didn't realise that the war main cell would stop me from jumping. It's an act because it's an actual physical object. I actually hit it when I jumped. So, the last paracausal feather is actually inside the boss's room. Now, what I'll say about about the quest, once you finish the quest, you can't do it from inside the mission. You can't complete it. So what you've got to do is go to Trossland, but don't go through the what don't go through the fireplace. Go above it and follow the route. As, as when we were doing the quest, you went to the like through an open door above where you would actually start the the Hawkmoon quest, that's where you go and just follow it and you'll eventually come to a place where you have to, it, it's it's in the round room where we fight the, fight all the waves, you you go and act, commune with the, the Hawk. So when you get into the boss room, we're going to come over here and we're going to try and clear these ads as, so that they don't, because they, they can replicate pretty quickly. Clear them out. Now the way it works is you get one wave per side, right? And there is the main mechanic. You've seen that. That's the main mechanic. The boss is a different boss, slightly different. Has a shield, and there's there's kind of like ads with auras around them 
that you have to take kill to drop these orbs. Two orbs drops the boss's shield. So what I do is I go right, clear the ads on the right, and then I come left with the second orb. Because once we do the damage to him, uh, the ads will appear on this side. So we can kill those ads. And we're going to stay here for the rest of the fight. The only time we're going to leave here, really, is... Uh, the only time we're going to leave here is, is to go and get those those cells. So, we're going to grab this cell. And when you grab these cells, see here, just wait for him to throw his darkness. You can take it up top, take it wherever you need to go. And then, change, you can drop it. The relic, it's not a cell. Now, I'm keeping my super for the next wave to, to like get him down really low. So as you can see, that's him. He's, he's going to go. Now we can clear these ads pretty quickly. I'm trying to get a war mine cell to kind of help me. I really got it a bit late. You can see I'm getting hit pretty hard. But the war mine cell, because I've got... One of the mods I've got on you to see, if, you, if you're interested, if you really want to use the exact same mods that I'm using... Uh, go and pause the start of the video and just have it just you can see I go through the mods I've got react I've got a, a mod on as well that uh, that uh, gives me an overshield when I put when I do my finisher just can help especially in the brown room when you need to finish some champions but I've got fire team medicom so every time I break a war main cell I'm gonna get health back so as you can see I'm g that's him broke grenade super and then, all we've got now, you see that wave of ads coming over the other side? We don't get a wave here, we're safe here, so I'm going to kill two of these. These are the, the guys that drop the cells. So, instead of dropping them, I'm just going to throw them one at a time. And then we'll go and kill another one. Just here. Go and get the cell, jump straight away. If you're on, the, if you're on a hunter, you can go invisible to do this. And then we just work the boss down, and that is it. This I, I, this boss is a lot simpler than last week's. A lot simpler. And when I get my grenade again, if he disappears, I can just charge my grenade and throw it. You can see he's went underneath, and that should be enough to kill him. And that's the run, guys. The final paracausal feather is just to our left, and un at the bottom base of this waterfall. That's where the final one is. And that's it, guys. I hope this helps you. I hope this helps you get your solo completions. If anybody wants to see a Hunter run on this or a Titan run this week, I will gladly do it. And if people still want to see an underleveled run, 1260, uh, I will get that out as well. Uh, let me know in the comments. If you do like this video, if you did enjoy it, please give it a like. And if you are a subscriber that doesn't get notified about my videos, make sure you've got your notifications on so you don't miss any of the content. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video.